Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guest blew audiences away with his portrayal of a child who loses his hearing in Todd Haynes' Wonderstruck. And now you can see Oakes Fegley in the highly anticipated adaptation of the Donna Tartt modern classic, The Goldfinch. Let's take a look. Everybody, please welcome Oakes Fegley. Let's hear it. Uh, hey. Thank you so hey. much for being here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Congratulations on being part of this movie, which is a uh, highly anticipated, kind of, I don't want to say long awaited because it's only been a few years, but I think as soon as the book was published, it was immediately such a success. Everyone was like, when, when can I get the movie? Yeah. What was it like being a part of something that had so much fanfare around it? Um, I mean, it's always difficult to... Uh to try to impress and, and satisfy the fans of the uh, original novel. And I think we did that really well. Um, and just being a part of it was a great set. And everyone in the cast and crew was just amazing to work with. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you have a, a sort of murderer's row of actors that you're working with in this in this movie, right? Uh, Finn, Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things. And then we have uh, Nicole Kidman, Jeffrey Wright, uh, and then I believe we have Luke Wilson, Sarah Paulson. Uh, what was it like doing scenes with all of them? Um, Who was your favorite? It's incredible. I mean, Sarah is one of the most fun people to be around. She's hilarious. And, um, I mean, Finn's also awesome. He's super sarcastic, and we got along really well. <laughs> I imagine working with Sarah is a lot of fun. I mean, her character is somewhat antagonistic towards you. Yeah. And uh, you, the two of you have on screen a kind of not just antagonistic, but mocking relationship of each other. Yeah, which is kind of what made uh, our relationship offset a little bit more fun. <laughs> you poking fun and ribbing each other a lot? No, no, no. Exactly the opposite, actually. So um, she's an incredible actress, and, and working with her is it's just awesome. <laughs> you have a, an amazing scene with, um, with Luke Wilson. And I mean, you have a number of great scenes, but one scene specifically, and it was one of my favorite moments from the book, uh, which is the moment when he is um, this, you know, gambling addict is telling his son that, you know, he has to basically take the money out of his fund. Um, yeah. The scene is heartbreaking. What was it like shooting that scene with him? Um, he felt terrible filming that scene. I know that for a fact. He, he um, was constantly asking me if I was all right, but... Um, Everything was great. We had a fight coordinator, and um, everything went really smoothly. So you never um, see Luke Wilson play people like that. Yeah, he only no, he plays nice guys. Exactly, and and seeing him, I know he had a lot of fun with the role because it let him explore like a darker side and um, let him kind of just bring that out, uh, which was really nice. And I think he's the perfect person to play that role, and um, it really shows. Yeah, he's he's an awesome person to work with, and. Like I said, he felt terrible, but um, that scene was a lot of fun, and, and we really pulled it off. What was it like um, playing this character who's filled with uh, an almost extreme amount of sorrow? When we meet him, his mother has just uh, died in a terrorist attack inside of a museum, and then all of these other sort of twists and turns happen to him in a very quick amount of time that push him uh, into a fairly desperate place. Yeah, I mean, um, it's always interesting playing roles like that because you have to bring something out, um, not only from yourself, but develop something that you can kind of connect with. And um, every actor has a different process. And um, trying to create that role and, and have those darker themes come out was, was a lot of fun, but also work. And, and I think John Crowley, the amazing director we had on this, um, really helped me out with that, and I know... Say that with a smile on your face. Yeah. Is that because you had a lot of fun working with John? Yes. No, John is, John is one of the most uh, incredible directors I've ever worked with, and he's a very calm person and um, very happy um, to be a part of this, and I know he he put a lot of his soul into this, and, and working with Roger Deakins, the cinematographer on this... Um, legend. Absolute legend. Yeah. Um, he also won the Oscar while we were filming, which was pretty cool. <laughs> he uh, won the Oscar for Blade Runner, and that was really cool because he just came back and um, something. Did he bring his Oscar back to the set? No, something interesting about Rogers is that he's uh, an extremely humble person, and um, he actually hates it when people congratulate him or um, tell them that they're or tell him that they're fans or anything like that. He is just absolutely like, okay, okay, let's get back to work, and um, it's really funny because. He 
is such an incredible, incredible person to work with, and the way he works is beautiful, and the, the shots he brings out are, are incredible, and um, then trying to be like, wow, this is awesome. You say that to his face, and he'll look, give you a dirty look, <laughs> and um, he, he never wants attention, and that's, that's something really beautiful about him. You know, there's um, uh, your your not your last film, but one of your last films, Wonderstruck by Todd Haynes, uh, a film that I'm absolutely in love with, uh, has some s parallels to your character in this. Both sort of pa parentless children, hunting, searching for meaning. Uh, did you talk about that at all with John? Had he seen Wonderstruck? Is that where this part came from for you? Um, I don't know if he had seen the film, but I know that for me, it's they they do draw similarities in a lot of ways, but they're also very different. And obviously, even in age, um, Theo's a bit more mature. And as I have matured as well, I hope. <laughs> um, what are you, like four or five years older, right? Like Yeah, you, I think it was you shot probably, him? yeah, at least three years older. Um, so it's a big change in my life. And, and going through that time was obviously changed me as a person. Um, but... The characters are very different, and the stories are very different. So um, I think I didn't necessarily draw a lot of par parallels while developing th the, the character of Theo. Um, but, I mean, filming and, and trying to bring some of that emotion out is, is similar always, I guess. And, um, and, and portraying a, a character who goes through a lot of pain and is orphaned, I guess, is, um, is kind of similar. Yeah, exactly. Both orphans is what Both we're Both orphans, yeah. How did you start acting? <laughs> um, my sister was an actress, or is an actress, and she um, is uh, at Syracuse University right now studying acting. And um, we are a family of actors, and my parents actually met acting. So um, altogether, I've kind of just been surrounded by that um, kind of energy and, and passion for acting, which is great. And um, I think after... Seeing her work on stage and um, kind of just looking up to her and, and wanting to maybe do that for myself, I uh, ultimately got an agent and then just started putting myself out there. And um, I guess one thing led to another. And um, here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first uh, role? Uh, my first role was Tiny Tim um, in A Christmas Carol, which was... Uh, an interesting one for me, but I was probably, I think, six years old, so. Is that on stage? Yes, it was. What um, was your first film TV role? It was uh, a kid named Paul in a film called Fort Bliss. Mm -hmm. And um, it is, it's still a, a great film, and I, I worked with Michelle Monaghan on that, and um, she was a great. Oh, that is, that's the film where she's a veteran. Yes, yes, yes. yes. that film. Excuse awesome. me. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Um, Good movie. Thank you. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it was really important for me, obviously, um, and kind of the first thing I ever did and uh, introduced me to the world of film and um, working on camera, which is great. And I learned a lot from not only her, but just everyone we worked with. And um, it's, it was, yeah, a lot of fun to do that uh, at my age and got to go to L.A. for the first time and all that. So um, it really introduced me to this world. So your first film is six years old, right? Or no, that's the Tiny Tim was six years old. Yes, Corpus I think it was, was probably maybe seven. Seven. And how old are you right now? I am turning fifteen in about two months. Fifteen so I'm years 14. old. Completely different kind of person yeah. <laughs> than you were when you were seven, I would imagine. How has acting changed for you over the course of getting older? I'd imagine it's a completely different thing when you're seven years old and you're being told to go here, say this, do that. And now at fifteen even 13 or 14, you were actually thinking what the truth of a scene is or how do I emotionally get myself to this place? Yeah, no, of course. Um, it's very different trying to um, to bring real emotion out uh, at the certain point you just kind of mature. And I mean, I think everybody goes through that uh, and, and just realizes at a certain point that they are older and they can kind of think more about... Um, more in-depth things and, and about their emotions and all different things like that. I mean, as a kid, you, you can kind of bring certain things out of yourself, but it's, uh, it was difficult for me to, I guess, um, pull different parallels and do research and all that. So uh, as an older actor, I guess I could say, or as a uh, young, or still young, but 
um, older than I was. And I would say I do a lot more research and I, I can um, kind of develop the character much better and, and um, more in depth than I ever could at seven years old. Is there a feeling or an awareness when you're acting now of when something feels real and when something feels fake and needing to do it again versus when you were seven years old? Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you don't feel satisfied with a take or you um, don't feel satisfied uh, when working, I mean, obviously dire the director is, is the person who's going to say ultimately make the cut and, um, and decide what goes where in the film. But um, I, multiple times we feel like I just didn't get something right or I, I could, couldn't feel it as, uh, as strongly as I think I could have on set. And then I would ask for a different take or, or ask for another take that I could, um, could show something else with um, while working on this film. And I, I, working with uh, Todd Haynes and John Crowley, they're both awesome, really calm directors. And um, both of them would kind of let me um, talk to them and, and just explore the character through their eyes and um, through the production. Now you're getting cast in like fairly heavy dramatic work. Are you yourself drawn to that kind of work or do you like other other stuff? I mean, anything that interests me interests me and I think uh if any sort of script came to me and it and I connected with it it would uh, it would catch my eye and I'd be interested in it and um I I have played some kind of heavier roles recently but um I'm interested in in all sorts of different work, and I I would be willing to work on anything. Yeah. What uh What was the hardest part about playing young Theo? Um, that's difficult. Um, but I would say trying to to just form the relationship that Theo has with the painting, the goldfinch, um, and it kind of ties him to the event that uh, took place and. Um, the tragedy that that follows, um, and I think he it has such a connection to this object, and and trying to form that with something that um, I don't necessarily I wouldn't go through normally in my real life. Uh, that was definitely a difficulty. But um, John is an incredible director, like I've said, and he really was helpful in in creating that and uh, drawing that emotion from something that isn't human or, or something that um, can hold meaning and, and um, ultimately change who you are, but it, it isn't a real person or it isn't um, something even physical. Like, the goldfinch is a physical object, but it holds significance to Theo, um, and it reminds him of his mother and brings back terrible memories. So um, trying to form that was definitely a difficulty, but... Um, at the same time, it was, it was fun to kind of do that and um, create that. Ansel Elgort plays um, older Theo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how much interaction did the two of you have in terms of discussing your performances? Um, I know for a fact John wanted to kind of keep us separate as, um, as actors because ultimately there are two different roles. Um, and while they are the same person, they're at diff very different times in their lives. And... Um, experience a lot of different things, so trying to um, make that work, I know for a fact John didn't want us to connect too much while, while filming, but at the same time, we did rehearsals at the beginning um, before we actually filmed, and um, ultimately, we didn't see each other very much on set, but when we did, we would have little conversation about how we were responding to direction and... Um, how we were developing the character and different relationships between characters. Um, we did talk here and there, but it wasn't very often. How was it working with uh, Nicole Kidman? Nicole is such an awesome actress, and um, being able to work with someone so legendary and so um, incredibly beautiful and, and awesome um, was, was incredible. And, and I was very nervous going into work the first day uh, when I was going to meet her. Um, but after meeting her and after working with her on a few scenes, she uh, is a very conversational and nice person. And um, she's just a very warm person. And 
uh, I'm very glad that I was able to to meet her and obviously work with her and all of that. Would you say she was the person you were most nervous about working with? I think so, yeah, because I just, I mean, I've seen so much of her work, and she's such an incredible person and actress, and um, I'm really proud to be able to say that I, I worked with her and have been able to hold conversation with her. Yeah. Uh, what is it about, I mean, you've been in a Todd Haynes film and a John Crowley film, two incredible directors that build really beautiful worlds. Um, is there, does this make you sort of know that you really just want to work with sort of visionary directors and, and, and filmmakers who really have a voice? I mean, like I said previous, if, if a project catches my eye, um, it doesn't, I mean, obviously working with an interesting director is, is always a plus and definitely um, heightens that. But at the same time, if, if a director is interested in me and, and shows something of um, importance or, or meaning to me, then I'd be willing to work with anybody who, who really um, puts out something of, of quality and, and something that catches my eye. I think we have a question coming in from Twitter. Uh, if they want to pull that Twitter question up, it's, uh, what would you say to Theo if you could talk to him? <laughs> um, just that everything's going to be okay and, and you have to make your way through life. But um, as terrible as things are, um, ultimately life is very beautiful and um, trying to stay on track is going to be difficult, but uh, ultimately it's, it's worth it. Did, uh, was Donna Tartt, the author of the book, ever on set or anything like that? She wasn't on set, and I, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting her, um, but she's an incredible author, and um, I'd love to one day. Yeah. Uh, a couple questions from the audience. Who has a question? Hi. I was, I was actually going to ask about Donna Tartt as well, but... Um, Sit down. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, were you a fan of her book or aware of it at all? And um, I guess she wasn't... Uh, how involved was she in making the film? Um, I know that uh, we didn't rest, really spend time with her on set or, or we didn't get to meet her, but um, her book is so incredible. And, and after learning that I was going to play the part and... Um, I'm involving myself with the project. I, I read the, uh, the book and, and my portions to try to pull um, characteristics from the book and uh, descriptions that I could build the character with. Um, but I didn't get to meet her, and like I said, I'd love to one day. But um, it's also, it's also uh, I think, would have changed the way we filmed. And um, I'm, I'm really proud of the film, so I, I'm glad that um, it turned out the way it did, but I hadn't read the book before um, portraying Theo, but my mom had, and she was a huge fan of the novel, so um, as soon as I learned that I was going to play the character, she was ecstatic and um, really happy to be even just a small part of that. What was the audition process like? Um, I think I did maybe a taped audition, and then... After that, I guess John liked it, and uh, I went in to do a chemistry test with Finn, where we kind of just worked off each other and did the scenes, and then ultimately, I guess John was a fan, so we we ended up in the project. What was uh, what was your audition process like for Wonderstruck? Because that's a performance that largely consists of no words. Yeah, um, I mean, Very we did. Few. We we did. I think I auditioned with, with um, maybe one uh, scene where I had had the hearing impairment or had the character had been deaf, and um, so that was obviously difficult to try to create. But after auditioning, I think I did a taped audition as well, and then went in to meet with Todd um, and maybe some of the producers. I. Um, was able to kind of do some research into that, and Todd was very helpful with that. We spoke with a few um, deaf people and, and kind of talked to them about their lives and just how they go about things, and um, some really awesome people I got to meet, and uh, I got to learn a little bit of sign language. Haven't retained much of it, unfortunately, but um, I think it's an incredible um, 
world, and, and a lot of people don't feel recognized in that world. But at the same time, recently we've had a lot of great films that kind of bring out that, um, that world and, and show the people um, that these people live their lives in a different way, but um, are really amazing people and, and do some amazing things. I think we have time for one more question right here. Hi, we have an online question from our right. site, buildseries.com, and it's asking, uh, at a young age, you've already worked with renowned directors such as Todd Haynes and David Lowry. Are there any other filmmakers you look up to that you'd like to work with next? Ooh, that's crazy. Um, I absolutely love Wes Anderson films, and I guess I would, I would be incredibly proud to, to work with Wes Anderson or... Um, Steven Spielberg or or anybody who has you know a lot of um, films under their belt and has worked with so many incredible people I think would be a lot of fun and and being able to be part of that um, community and that roster would be pretty awesome. Uh, Oaks, congrats on the Goldfinch, Thank you. man, and congrats on Wondershuck as well. I can't tell you as mu uh, how much I love that film, but the Goldfinch comes out this Friday, right? Yes, I believe the thirteenth. The thirteenth. Yes. Yes. And uh, congratulations, Oaks Fegley, everybody. Let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you.